Hello and welcome back to the 2022 United States Women's Disc Golf Championships presented by Innova Champion Discs. Round three, back nine coverage, lead card action at Jomez Pro. We are your hosts. My name is Paige Pierce. And I'm Kona Panis. And I'm excited to get into this nine. We are going straight off a hot front nine. Evelina, three for three on the last three holes, heating up, making the gap only two strokes between her and Maria Oliva. And we got so many hot scores. We got Hannah Bloomrose at five under par through the front nine. We also have Kat Merch at five under through the front nine. And then we have Valerie Mandujano at four under through the front nine. And Sayananda, even though she's bogey free for the entire tournament, is dropping spots because she's only at two under. That's how well these ladies are playing on this lead card. Yeah, as we go into hole 10, par three, 282 feet, we have two gaps off the tee. You can go for the Anheuser backhand, or there's the right gap that's more flat to left backhand shot. Solonen going with her star may go three. Left side flex, beautiful speed, perfect shot. It does end up a little bit short because of that last little shrub she hit, but she's on one right now. I, I have to imagine she's gonna at least draw metal if not hit that putt. Own throwing her Star Destroyer, and she caught some cabbage on the right side, so she's going to be left with a very long putt. King with a Metal Flake MD3. This is a very overstable mid-range, similar to that same mid-range James Conrad was throwing a few years back, if you remember that purple mid-range. I've seen so many beautiful shots with that. Actually, right here on Jomez Pro. Maria Oliva, and I'm loving the height on this. She's letting the disc work towards the basket. Oh, she's almost acing it, Paige. I cannot believe how close these ladies are. Oliva, we have to see that replay. Wide hyzer gap. It slows her down just a touch, and it hyzers out. If she doesn't touch that branch, it's not gonna clip it into hyzer and it would have drawn metal. What a beautiful shot. Oh, Solonen, so close. What a bid to go four for four. She'll have to settle for par. And King now is the story of hole 10. Can she make this? Oh, and hitting a high branch. I don't know if she really thought about that just a little high out of her hand. That would have been to close the gap on both Solonen and Oliva after her miss here. Huh, I'm, I'm surprised that she missed that putt. She's been committed on all of her C2 Oof. putts and ooh. almost a little too hard on that putt too. It looked like it wanted to bounce back out of the basket. And I'm surprised to see that no one on the card got the, the birdie. Yeah, especially after how good those drives were. But, you know, the storm's rolling in. It's hot. It's humid. And the, the sky's starting to get dark at this point. We were hearing there was calls of thunderstorms at 6 p.m. At this mm -hmm. point in the round, it's probably around 4.50, 5 o'clock. So we're hoping to get through this round before the rain hits. This is hole 11. It's a par three, 309 feet. Like we talked about on the front nine, there is no out of bounds at Elver Park, but I think this is such a beautiful hole because it's kind of like natural OB. If you get off the fairway, you are not gonna be able to get out and up and down easy. You wanna make sure you keep it straight. It does look like it filters to the right, but off the tee, if you throw dead straight 310 feet, you should only have about a 20 foot putt. Yeah, and I think something to say about this hole, it is very uphill. So our players are going to throw these huge Anheuser shots, wanting it to drift right towards the basket. But like we just saw from Solonen, it does tend to come out because you're throwing it so high up. And I don't know what they had on this hole, but um, there was a tailwind at one point. Scoggins with her overstable Colossus 
gets a nice flex, but not quite wide enough to start that flight. She is going to find herself on the right side in the brush. And par is probably best case scenario. Haley with the forehand, she's going to leave herself with a circle two putt. Oliva with the Star Roadrunner. I like the stability choice here, but doesn't quite get it high enough or wide enough. She's going to find the bushes, but fortunately those bushes are just outside the circle. Maybe she can make this happen. It Honestly, Kona didn't even look like she gave that a bid. No, it kind of just looked like a layup. Maybe she didn't feel confident running it. And maybe she thought her competitors weren't close enough to gain that stroke, so she just wanted to minimize the damage. But Salonen is on the green from 45. Oh, and doing a little jump, hitting the headband. Thankfully, that again didn't go too far, so she should be able to tap out for her easy par. Haley with the only birdie on this hole. Beautiful putt. And does it with a... Authority from circle two. This is about 42 feet dead center. She knew it out of her hand, bends over, grabs the mini before it's even come to rest in the basket. Own making good on her par save. Typical. <laughs> <laughs> and a bunch of par tap-ins from the rest of the competitors. We have a close match here. 20 under par, 22 under par, 23 under par, and 25 under par on this lead card. Everyone is still in this. As we move on to hole 12, it's a par three, 309 feet. This does play a little bit uphill, so our players are either gonna throw a hyzer flip, a dead straight neutral flying disc, get up there, skip on the chips, give themselves a putt for birdie. Haley King with the honors. I have to say I'm surprised with the disc choice here. I don't think she should have thrown something else, but with her distance, with what we've seen her disc choice be on previous holes, shorter than this, she's gone mid-range. So... That uphill must be more dramatic in her head because she's clubbing up to that fairway driver. Salonen almost acing that basket. It looked like it was going in. <laughs> that tree needed to move, Paige. <laughs> I wish that tree had legs. We want to see some <laughs> baskets hit. And what a shot. But, I mean, she's honestly still right by the basket. Scoggins as well, just 20 to 25 feet away. Can our leader, Oliva, get up there and not give a stroke away to a couple competitors? Getting a fortunate tree kick. That's the one thing about this hole is if it fights everything and it's fading out, it is going to filter left. So good tree kick. She's going to have a circle putt for her birdie. Scoggins gets that disc catcher to grab it on the right side. The crowd loves to see it. Look at all these people who came out to watch, Paige. It's it's honestly been amazing. The crowd here in Wisconsin has been great. <sighs> Unfortunately for Oliva, that putt was not what she wanted. She's going to miss that and give up some strokes. <sighs> and Evelina just leaving it a bit early and a little left. Yeah, that tree on her left side made her throw more of a hyzer angle on that putt, but unfortunately for her, she put a little bit too much hyzer and misses left. That's not really the miss you would expect to see on that putt. So King, with two birdies in the last two holes, comes up to tie Salonen at 23 under par and to move within two of the lead. 
Pool 13 is a par three, 234 feet, also plays significantly uphill. This hole plays probably around 260 to 270. And this is, I would call it the gauntlet of this course because there are so many trees. Your shot needs to be as pure as can be. Haley opting for the forehand play with her Innova Star Croc. That wow. is a very overstable putter. And no trees hit. She doesn't have enough speed on that disc. I think the disc choice again, maybe this one needed to be more, like have a faster speed because she doesn't get herself there, but she is clear. Own a little bit in front of Haley King. We will see similar putts from them. Let's see if Solonen can get to the pin. As it fights through all the trees, she is gonna get a little bit of a skip to the right. Wow, pin high. It is so hard to get pin high on this hole without hitting a tree too. Oliva opting for the backhand and hitting early. She's ah, gonna have to scramble to I've save her I've seen part. that happen so many times on this hole. And this, is no man's land. You do not want to be over there. As you can see, you have to throw it up high and hope for that glide. But if you hit a tree, you're going to be even farther in the woods. And she's forced to throw a roller here. Which she's been practicing these a lot. She's been practicing a lot of different shots, scramble shots. And so she gets out, she leaves herself with a circle's edge putt, but it's for bogey page. All of her other competitors have a birdie putt. This could be a huge momentum shift. Unfortunately, not in Haley King's favor, but she can still get at least one stroke and make it two. Wow, very unfortunate misrelease from Oliva on this 234 foot hole. And Scoggins hitting a little bit high, but that disc catcher catches it and she's gonna, oh yeah, run it back. Let's see this slow miss. Yes, just high, but it gets under the headband. She goes and runs it in. That's gonna move her to 22 under par. Oh, just high. And you know, this is a good correction from Evelina. Earlier in this year, we've seen her miss quite a few that have been like under committed hyzering on the left side. And to see her get enough speed and power to go over the basket quite a few times this round, um, it's been really refreshing. And Paige, look at the score difference now. Maria losing two strokes to the card and now we have a three-way tie going into hole. 14 is a par three, 240 feet. This is a downhill shot, but it is a tunnel. If you miss a little bit right, you're hitting a tree. If you're missing left, you're hitting a tree as well. So distance control is key. You wanna hit this gap and give yourself a putt for two. Yeah, Kona, this scoreboard is exciting me so much. We, like you said, we have a three-way tie. And also the last competitor is only one back in Own Scoggins. And, you know, Maria does take that bogey, but it was on the hardest hole of the course. Only 8% got that birdie. So if you're going to do it, that was kind of the hole to do it on. Hopefully that is going to be her only mistake of this round. Yeah, let's see if uh, Oliva can come back on this next hole and take a birdie. Solonen going with the Star AVR X3 or Star AVR 3. Ooh, and she crushed it past the basket. She's gonna have to contend with some bushes. Oh, no. And you know, when you take a bogey, the first thought in your head as a competitor is to not let it compound, move on, reframe your mindset, and just move on, leave it in the past. Maria does not convert on that tee shot but this beautiful roller like you talked about that she's been practicing gets her up in the circle she can save par and what a beautiful looking approach from king she's gonna have an easy tap in for par i was surprised to see two competitors on this lead card so far back on this hole and you know owns not 
a throwaway, but still to be at circle two's edge on a 240 foot shot that just shows you how tight these holes are out here. I mean, even Salonen with a tomahawk. I mean, <laughs> you know, that just goes to show you this is not an easy hole. A little bit too much hyzer. So Solonen is going to lose a stroke to the card. Oh, and what a beautiful par putt for Maria. She kind of put that in there like, hey, I'm not messing around. We are not taking another bogey here. Let's move on. Get on the fairway on hole 15 and try to get a birdie. Solonen is going to lose a stroke to the card. While King taps in her par. Still tied with Oliva, moving into hole 15. Owen is right behind them, only one stroke behind Paige. Hole 15, par four, 390 feet. You wanna throw it about dead straight, about 375 feet, and then hope that your disc breaks a little bit to the right, whether that's a late flipping backhand, or in Owen's case, I would have to assume a flexing sidearm that loses speed and hyzers towards the pin. Oh. But she's hopping for the backhand page. Wow. You know, I'm a huge Scoggins fan, and I can't believe that I was wrong there. I know. Backhand. I'm surprised, too, and now she is filtered to the left side of the fairway. She's going to have to scramble. Ooh. What a drive from King. Leaves it a little bit low, doesn't get enough height to glide into circle one, but she is in circle two and an open look. Maria trying to get some max distance with her Star Destroyer. She did yank it just a tad bit right. She's going to get an unfortunate roll into the shrubs. I have to believe that Scoggins is going to change that play going into round four. Evelina with her Glow Destroyer getting a beautiful flight. In high. In high, Paige. Wow. Circle two look. In high. This, this drives uphill, too. So, yes, it says 390 feet, but you're throwing it like 4, 415. Oliva off the fairway again. She's looking to get back on that clean train. Remember how well she played this front nine. And check out this sick flex forehand from Scoggins. She was in the shrubs, had a crazy Stretch out into the fairway. Beautiful flex. She's going to have a look for birdie. Oliva with a beautiful patent pending. Down tempo. Nice slow drifting Anheuser shot just to circle's edge. And King now wants nothing to do with that. Maybe the airspace wasn't as clear to run those chains. So she just goes for the stress-free 33. Solonen looking like she gave that a very soft bid, but like you said, birdie's just fine. Ooh, Oliva dead center chains to save her par. This is exactly what she needs to make sure that momentum doesn't shift too far into King's favor. Oh, and a very unkick characteristic miss from Scoggins. She actually misses on the right side and you can see it in her body language. She just throws her head back like, come on, own. Evelina, on the other hand, with the birdie, that is going to move her up to 23 under par, tied with Oliva and King jumps ahead to 24 under. This is still any of their game. This is what we love to see as announcers, as fans, as spectators, everything of the game. We love the close battles. Love the close, close battle as we go into hole 16, par three, 285 feet. This hole actually plays a little bit longer. I'd say it plays more like 300. We're gonna see our players for a very straight neutral flying disc. You don't want it to turn too much. You don't want it to fade too much. It's a tunnel shot. 
Yeah, and Kona, I actually hit this with the rangefinder, and it was 335 from the T. Okay. So I think the T sign was unfortunately off. wrong. But that is just the preparation you need to know. Yep. If you're coming up short in practice, adjust from there. Salonen gets herself onto the green, dead center in the gap, well-thrown shot. Own flexing a beautiful drive. Almost pin high. And as you can see, Oliva gets the towel out. At this point, there are sprinkles coming down through the canopy. We're hoping we can get through this round without having to bring the umbrellas into play. Oliva with a very unfortunate drive, trying to throw a flex forehand. She's going to have a tough putt to save her par. King from 70. Just a bit low right. She smiles. She likes the attempt, but wishes she could get that one more time, I bet. Oh. Oliva just a bit left. She's going to be tapping out for bogey, and she's, she's slowly losing her lead page. King now has the lead at 24 under. Let's see if Maria can get these last few holes to maybe get that lead back going into round four. Solomon. Oh my gosh, huge birdie look. That is to move up to 24 under par. She is in the mix. She's feeling confident and her putting stroke is as solid as I've seen it in the last two years, <gasps> honestly. No. And this is very uncharacteristic of Maria. She's a very committed, very strong putter and so it's very odd to see her miss like that so this might be something that she maybe mentally is just not there right now yeah but maria's also never led a major championship before so i have to assume that some of these errors are because of the nerves One of the values of this is that these AM women in young women, like, you know, people in intermediate or in the age protected division can come out and know that they're playing the same tournament as Paige Pierce, as Katrina Allen, like, as those top players on tour. And I think that being able to see yourself in that position is really important. Feel connected to, you know, the stars of a sport or feel like you can be that person at some point, I think is really important. Hole 17, par four, 459 feet. I gotta say, this is probably the most beautiful hole of the event thus far. Dead straight, late in the flight, about 100 feet from the basket, you're gonna start seeing a bunch of trees. So you do have to power this drive in there, but you wanna make sure that you hit a gap because if you're throwing a driver through this gap, you are likely to clip and be way off the fairway. Gosh, Paige, that was looking like it was going forever. I mean, she had the speed on that. Had the speed, unfortunately hit that tree. She still has the opportunity for the birdie, though. King gets that speed as well. Can she miss that last tree? Oh my gosh, she makes the catch cams move. That is when you know you've thrown a good shot. <laughs> Run it back. Wow, you can see Wayne in the background, our Jomez Pro catch cam. He just stops filming and claps. He's like, wow, <laughs> I don't even know what to do. <laughs> like, what a beautiful drive from Haley King. She is in prime position for an eagle two on the 17th hole of moving round. Mm, own hitting a last tree. It was looking like a great shot. It was filtering back to the fairway. She might be a little bit off the fairway for her uh, approach. Ooh, and Maria, she is fed up. She got on this one. <laughs> yes, she did, Kona. A little bit nose up, so it's losing speed, and I actually think that helped her when she clipped that tree. It's still on the fairway, so 
She's in good position for that birdie three, but she could still lose a stroke to Haley King if she can convert on that eagle putt. What a beautiful approach from Own. She It looked like she turned that over a lot, but right as it was coming into the basket, it faded out, and she's going to have an easy birdie here on hole 17. Solonen with a beautiful, beautiful speed control. That is how it's done just outside the bullseye. Oliva should be able to convert from there for her birdie. King now with the opportunity to get this eagle dead center. She is not going to miss the opportunity. This has been the only eagle of the event thus far besides aces. What a momentum shift. I mean, Maria's already kind of frustrated off the fairway. King hits this putt, jumps up to 26 under par. And to lose a stroke with a birdie, she. what do you even do? You move on to hole 18, right? But yes. You can't help but just hang your head a little bit and think what could have been. I mean, look at Maria Oliva's back nine. Par, 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 bogey, par, par, bogey. Unfortunately. After that hot of a front nine. All right, we're heading into hole 18, par three, 474 feet. This is a straight downhill shot. So when you're throwing downhill, discs tend to flip up and there usually is a light left to right wind on this hole. So angle control is very important, making sure you're picking the correct disc. And let's see if we can get some birdies to finish out and see who will lead going into round four. And at this point, it is raining pretty hard. This tee shot, you are in the canopy, but from wherever your putt lands, you are going to be putting with rain, so we want to be as close as possible. King, 45 feet away. This is an easy, easy par, but does she want to get spicy and try to get that birdie and extend her lead? Ooh, Evelina keeping this one low. I have to say, Kona, I just looked up at the scoreboard. Evelina, three for three on the last three holes. I kind of didn't even see that because I just got so into the Oliva King battle. This is such a cool event that we have so many players to keep tabs on. Speaking of at this point, wow, what a shot, what a shot. What did she say? I don't know, but she's loving it. <laughs> Speaking of at this point in the clubhouse, we have multiple competitors at eight under par, nine under par. This was moving day and a lot of people came to play today. Oliva hitting the right trees. She's gonna have a long approach to save her par. Go, go, go. And she kind of goes quick on that. I have to imagine to make sure she's throwing with a dry disc, but she's leaving herself a tester. Leaving herself a tester and hole 18, you, you don't want a tester. There's people watching you. You're trying to finish out, get done. So let's see if Maria can convert on her par putt. But first, let's see if Haley puts the pressure on with this birdie. Can she get herself to 27 under? Oh, she wanted it over the top. What a bid, and honestly, that kind of tells me King is feeling nervous. Oh, and maybe I'm reading too much into that, Kona, but if she wanted that putt that bad in that moment, she wants as many strokes as possible going into round four because she knows all of these ladies are out here motivated, driven, focused, and so talented. Maria makes easy work of that and gets the par to get off the course. You know, this back nine obviously was not working well for her, but she's off the course at 22 under par and minimal damage. And we have a new leader in the clubhouse, Haley King, 26 under par with a freaking eagle page. Only one of the tournament, oh, Evelina, with the wet hands, it's hot, it's wet, 
She's grabbing that whale sack. She's not letting it go. She's trying, trying, trying to keep her focus. She does get that turkey on 15, 16, 17, but it's sandwiched in between two bogeys. She finds herself at 24 under, which is a great score, but she's going to wish that she could get that putt back. Beautiful ovation from the crowd. Lovely to see so many people out here cheering on women's disc golf. You guys at home, do the same. Share it, like, subscribe. Let's make this the most viewed women's coverage of all time. As you can see, Haley King with a hot round at nine under par. And like we said, we have some eight unders. You see Katie Alsalu from Estonia jumping up nine spots. You got the same lead card going into round four. We're going to see more of this same exciting action. And we can't thank the Founders Club enough. All the Patreons, the Patreon community, we love you guys so much. It is such a personal place to be. And we are so excited to get to the crowning round to to see who's gonna become a major champion, Kona. Yeah, to take the largest women's title in history. You know, it's it's crazy. I mean, Haley King, she's killing it. These ladies are playing incredible golf. I can't wait to see them clean it up tomorrow at Elver Park one last time before our queen is crowned. Mm -hmm.